Hey guys, this is Terry. I wanted to give you an update on what I've been doing for the uh, last several weeks. Uh, I think on my last video I was uh, showing you that I had bought a uh, Woodward Fab uh, bead roller. Well, I went ahead and made a stand for it. I used a brake drum from a semi as the base because I wanted it to be kind of heavy. Uh, I ended up watching several videos on YouTube about you know the Woodward Fab and the Eastwood uh, bead roller are probably made by the same same people I would imagine. Um, I think Shevaholic had a video on his bead roller and some of the mods he did to his and I liked what he had done. He had made this to where it springs back up. You can see that. Um, it just makes it a little bit more user friendly so I went ahead and copied that and did that and I used a gauge bolt like he did. Um, I made this to where it was a kind of a receiver hit style deal where you could remove one or the other, remove this or the shrinker stretcher and use whichever one you need. And, uh, and then I made a little tray down here for it to hold all the stuff that you need to do it. It comes with all the dies and then I actually played around with it a little bit to make some covers to cover up the fact that you know it is a brake drum off of a semi so anyway there's that uh, I had bought that bead roller for doing more than just one deal but the main reason why I bought it was to build this pod in here for my ignition switch and I bead rolled this on it and then put a return flange on it and mounted it in here. This is what I've been wanting to do for a while. I didn't ever like the way this looked just by itself. So what actually holds it on is the ignition switch here. Then I picked up a couple mounting points up here to hold it in place and it makes it look a lot a lot better I think and it'll get finished out with the same paint details as the dash so I did finally get that done and I went ahead and did the light body work on the door panels and kick panels and knee bolsters and all this stuff that gets used to cover up uh, all the stuff I don't want to see and uh, that's what the uh, ended up looking like over the ECM so I think that's going to be okay. Uh, not a lot of room in these trucks. And I decided that I'm going to mount the ECM. If you can see this up in this area here. Uh, that way it's out of sight but it's accessible. And this whole this circle here is going to be for the check engine light. This is first generation so uh, when you code scan it you have to count flashes. So that's why I'm putting them next to each other to kind of make it easy. But, yeah, I got all the kick panels primed and everything looks pretty good. Um, it's kind of nice to put some primer on some stuff, I will we'll say that. Uh, getting ready to start the headliner. Now the headliner is going to be a two-piece deal. And it's going to be split right here across the truck and stop right here on this panel. This will be painted from here down. This will be headliner piece number one, which will stop here, up at this beam here. And then headliner piece two will pick up here and go to here. And then I'll make some stuff to finalize these areas here out and down in through here, this area. I'll have to make something to kick over and over. Uh, I've been doing a little bit of research on this. Uh, I'm gonna overlay this over the cab and I got this mat given to me several several years ago and it's really a thin mill of fiberglass but what I do like about it is it is uh, formable to what I'm doing uh, it's way thin it's way too thin for what I'm doing so what I thought I would do is uh, lay up this is a single layer of that glass right here and I think that's way too thin. This is a double layer, and it's it's better. 
I think what I'm gonna do is make my foundation out of, a, out of three wet layers of this. But I mean, when I'm gonna say three wet layers, I'm talking uh, resin, glass, resin, glass, resin, glass. And that'll give me a good base foundation for coming back and abrading it and putting something a little bit more substantial behind it after I get the initial shape that I want. There's gonna be a lot of body work and stuff involved with it, so. I guess it doesn't really matter. It's going to take a little while to do it because of the dry times. Um, this actually right here is a test just to see how thick this, what this actually would look like, which is this, when it was laid up. Uh, and this, this plastic here, this plastic is actually a car bag. This is a 3M car bag, which you put on over uh, your car when you're doing like maybe a fender and you're not taking the whole thing apart. Um, I wanted to see if the chemicals would burn through that. I know paint doesn't and clear doesn't, but I wanted to make sure that uh, that resin didn't have something in it that would burn through it. Uh, and it, it doesn't. It, it worked really well. So, and I'm not even going to use wax paper. This was just another test to, to see what wax paper how wax paper would react. We use wax paper at work on the on the resin that we use at work, and it's called Epicast. It's a lot thinner. Uh, this is this stuff here by Bondo. Is that Bondo? Yeah, by Bondo is not near as runny as the stuff we use at work. But anyway, um, I have a triple beam scale that, that's in grams, and in order to kind of ease. The mixing process of this, I had Julie go down and get one of these Harbor Freight uh, scales. What I like about this scale, it has the tear feature where you can set your cup on it and hit hit tear and it'll zero it out. So then you're not having to worry about the weight of the cup. All you have to worry about is the contents that you're putting in there. Like if you're doing 50, all you have to worry about is hitting 50, not 50 plus the weight of the cup. So that makes it a little bit uh, nicer, in my opinion. You know, and it's only 20 bucks. Uh, you bag it so you don't get shit all over it. I mean, there's no reason why it can't, it can't, you know, look as good for the whole time that I need it or have it. So I don't think I'm gonna use a paint cup. I think I'm gonna use a little something different than that. I think maybe a red solo cup or something like that. Something paper cup, something along them lines that I can just throw away so I don't have to clean this out. Because um, acetone is around what, $17, $20 a gallon by the time you, or depending on where you buy it at. So I don't want to waste a bunch of acetone cleaning this cup every time. So I'm going to get some throwaway stuff for that. Uh, so anyway, guys, that's where I'm at. That's what I've been up to. Uh, yeah, I really like the way the ignition switch looks now, but uh, it's just not, that thing's just not just hanging down there in front of God and everybody. But uh, anyway, guys, that's where I'm at. Thanks for watching. Bye.